Let's bring in one of those regulators. Gary Gensler is the chairman of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. He joins us from Sandler O'Neill's Brokerage Conference in New York. Uh, Commissioner uh, Gensler, always nice to have you on the program. You know, when Diamond stands up and does something like that, does that tick you off? Uh, David, it's good to be with you and your viewers. No, I think that uh, we live in a great democracy and we need this debate and we need to hear from people. But the American public uh, saw what happened when the regulatory system failed America and Wall Street and the financial system failed America. And far too many Americans are out of work because they didn't have the protection of regulated markets. Well, you know, well, J.P. Morgan, of course, is a big player in the derivatives market. It was a key part of their profitability for any number of years. They continue to, of course, be prominent in that market, swaps, whatever uh, parts of derivatives you want to talk about. What is it ultimately going to look like when we finally get the implementation that was outlined in Dodd-Frank in terms of profitability for many of these banks? Well, what I think it's going to look like for the American public is that it's going to have a great deal more transparency, and this might shift some of the information advantage from Wall Street to Main Street, that thousands of companies will get a benefit of a more transparent market. Also, will lower risk to the marketplace that was posed by interconnected dealers, uh, as we saw with the collapse of AIG. So I think the public benefits. I think ultimately the financial system benefits because it's stronger as well. Um, uh, Wall Street Journal uh, editorial today uh, actually uh, talks a bit about you and specifically the date of July 16th, which under uh, Dodd-Frank is when the old legal regime for so-called swaps contracts must expire to re be replaced by the new regime. Apparently that's not necessarily going to happen uh, and we're waiting for a web posting from the CFTC about clarifications to guide the derivatives market for this interregnum. What can you tell us about that? The journal editorial says, hey, not everyone is convinced that Gary's web posting is going to defuse the bureaucratic bomb that Chris, that being Chris Dodd and Barney Frank, have programmed to detonate next month. Uh, I was honored to be uh, uh, <laughs> there with Chris Dodd and Barney Frank, so um, uh, it's far more than a web posting, though, and we'd already announced uh, before they ran their uh, opinion piece that we're going to have a meeting next Tuesday, a public uh, commission meeting. We think we have the authorities to, to give uh, relief. We substantially completed our proposal phase of rules, but we're still working on finalizing those rules, and we'll be doing that throughout uh, much of the rest of this year. And the public will get to comment. We'll put something out next Tuesday, I would envision. The public will be able to weigh in, and then we'll finalize uh, something uh, which will be relief in this regard uh, before July 16th. So this idea that you'll have a lot of different legal opinions out there and potentially a lot of lawsuits, that is, uh, that is a specious argument? Well, I think that uh, the Dodd-Frank Act gave us one year, along with the SEC, to finish our rules. Uh, we're taking a lot of public comment in. It's going to take us a bit longer than a year. Um, and so we'll have some relief out there. And I think that we can adequately address these points. But the public will also get to weigh in, because we'll have a public comment period on what we're planning to do next week. Gary, let me ask you to make uh, somewhat of a right turn. You spent almost two decades at Goldman Sachs as a partner. Now you're a regulator, so you've got a good perspective on both sides. Um, Goldman's had a difficult, I guess, 12-month period trying to uh, sew up everything with the regulators. Um, you think Goldman Sachs' strategy in terms of trying to move ahead has been the right strategy for that firm, uh, given your knowledge of uh, how that firm operates? Well, I, I, I grant you the question, but I think that as a regulator and the head of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, our uh, remit is to look at the overall market and how to best protect the public. I think all of Wall Street uh, 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 is adjusting. The system failed America, is adjusting to new rules to be more transparent. Uh, and I think that uh, we, we look forward to working with all these firms as the, we shift to lower risk and greater transparency. You know, what, how long till we ultimately can say that shift has been completed, that the transparency you're talking about, specific to the markets that you regulate, uh, is going to be uh, fully exposed? I think it's going to still take some time. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of international coordination on this, and the president and heads of 20 other countries had committed to get this job done by the end of 2012. I think that we can substantially get our rules done this year in 2011. Then we can uh, um, meet that timeline that the president had laid out with other heads of states. Uh, 
uh, about uh, a year ago. You know, Gary, in terms of trying to protect the public and uh, have increased uh, levels of capital at the banks, I mean, there's no at no point do you actually look at uh, expected returns on equity, let's say, given higher capital commitments necessary, uh, and try to figure out whether or not um, uh, banks' profitability will be affected as a result of these higher levels of capital? Is that something that gets considered at all? Well, we do uh, have under the uh, reform bill uh, capital rules that we put in place. Uh, we've proposed them and people will re reply to them. We look very closely at cost and benefit and it is a balancing, uh, but I think the system failed. There was not as enough uh, cushion uh, of capital, margin requirements, there was not enough to lower the risk and ultimately the taxpayers bore that risk and seven or eight million Americans are still out of work that would otherwise have work. Yep. Over 10 million Americans have homes that are worth less than their mortgage. So we know the balance was not right into 2008. We have to rebalance the system. All right. Uh, Gary Gensler, as always, very much appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Gary Gensler, Chairman of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission.